Thank you for letting us, letting us be here today. I uh, you come in and see Mike. I, I know Mike. He worked at uh, Beale for a few years. I worked at Olin for all my life. We continued up going in and out there. And then, but I was, don't see him in there too much. I, yeah, I want to come in out of the parking lot. Where did I really know him from? SIUE. We both had tickets to the uh, uh, basketball game. So we, we, he's right in front of me for several years. And I bailed out on him finally. Hey, uh, what I want to do today is here to introduce Amy to you. But I want to give you a little history about the tire. It's not that old. Three years old. What people remember about the tire, it's been sitting down there on Route 3 since 2002. <coughs> Why, why, why have you been doing it? What's the trouble? What took so long? What's been said? Well, bottom line, it's just not the, the state to blame. The village of Hartford built this tire. We start, and the history, uh, well, I will tell you, we, we thought about building a, a tire in 2002. 2000. In 2002, we finally decided to build the tire. And the idea to build a tire was bicentennial was coming up 2004. Uh, after, uh, and the confluence is a big part of history, Lewis Clark history. A confluence. Uh, well, I always talk about saying uh, the confluence. Well, what's a confluence? Well, it's where two rivers meet. But the thing of it is, the bicentennial was coming up, every people was coming into town big time. They can't see the, bi the confluence from Illinois side. There's a 12 foot levee standard. So that's the reason we decided we we're going to build a tire. To, to get higher than the 12-foot levee. What we decided to do is build a 50-foot tire, a, 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 a forestry tire, we will build a forestry tire, 50 foot high, so you can see over the 12-foot levee. So you see the confluence where the Missouri comes into the Mississippi. Well, we thought that was a good idea. We went, had a few meetings on that. We finally got a, a cherry picker from the refinery to come down and let us see. We got, had some money coming in to do it. But we gotta get serious then when we get money. <coughs> So then what we decided to do is, is uh, get a cherry picker from the refinery to come down and go up to what it looked like 50 foot high. At 50 foot high, well over the 12 foot levee, all you can see is a 100 foot or 80 foot top cottonwood trees on, about on the far side. You couldn't see the confluence up from there. So that's no good. Now all you can see now is, is the, the trees. So we decided and uh, went back and forth. We finally decided, hey, we're gonna go higher than that. So we ended, well, ended up doing building a 150, 180 foot tower, three levels, 50 foot, 100 foot, and 150 foot. Now, as we as, as we got uh, we we got more money. They didn't earn enough money. We got the towers built. Didn't have no no elevator in it, no railings up there, no restrooms, no nothing. But we got the tower built for for two million dollars. But then you can't come see it. No restrooms. You have a restroom for you for men to go up. You understand that, especially after they come down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, we we went uh, we went for uh, into 2002. We decided to build a tower. We built the towers. Uh, the tower uh, twin twin concrete towers went from two million dollars to over five million dollars. That, that, not, not a bad price for what we did, did with it. We built the towers. We uh, didn't have any money. The tires sat there in a the cornfield. How many remember cor cornfields that down there, our uh, tires sat in the cornfield down there? Wondering what world was going on down there. And people said, Two, thousand, $2 million dollars? Look what that would go on streets or schools or something like that. So everybody wasn't happy with it. But we stayed with it. We, we got more grant, grants and more donations. The tire is built for it. We didn't do anything unless we had money for it. The village, people at Harvard wouldn't spend money on something like that, no. <laughs> but anyway, so we got it built, and, uh, and Deanna Barnes, most of you know her, uh, uh, she was saying, Charlie, what do we do now? We got a tire, and there's no funds to raise it. Uh, uh, how, you, how are we gonna handle it? So to make a long story short, we went to the Alton Tourism Bureau. We said we want to they said they'd run it for us. So we signed a contract for six months with them. They hired a manager to come in and run it for us. So that's, we're gonna have one employee, Amy. Mm -hmm. and, and, now, she's not the first one. Uh, she's the first one that stuck with us. 
she's been up about 18 months done a good, doing a good job. The tire, tire's on its way up now. I mean, we're trying to go this next level and the next level, so we're doing good. But anyway, the tire's built. Uh, you can see the confronts. You can see downtown St. Louis. You can see the Alton Bridges. Port you can see a good, good distance from up there. And the thing of it is, we're, we're at the point now, we're open three days a week right now. Uh, we were working five days a week. And by uh, this has become an international monument. Uh, people come from all over the world to see that. The first year that we opened the thing, we had 25,000 people go through it from 22 different countries. Now the thing of it is, if you come from, from uh, Europe, <coughs> other months, sorry, we want one of them to go up. You're pretty well upset when you get there and you can't, it's closed, it's closed. So what we're gonna to try to do in May is open seven days a week. If we can get like twice as much work out of guys we got already. Rick. Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another reason we're here today. We've had a few people <clears throat> coming and volunteered for us. Rick's one of them and he's a keeper. So we thought we'd come back and try again. Well, we haven't tried before, but we want one. We know we're okay. Now we had another good one from here. Uh, Kevin Subi, was he one of your members at one time? He, yeah, now, he's in Grafton, but he's still still working for us. But anyway, we got to this point here. We got the tires built. We got the, it's paid for. It's paid for. Uh, we didn't do anything unless we had it paid for. It's paid for. And what we're, we're needing now, we need some help to to try to uh, run it. So uh, Deanna, or Deanna, Deanna Barnes has been good with, with us. She's a, the, the project manager of the whole, the whole thing. But uh, Amy is going to be here to talk to you about anybody want to help volunteer. A Amy Curry, that's the lady. Got, she's from Alton. She graduated from SIUE. <coughs> her, her, her degrees were in, in public relations and communications. Just a gal for the job. And uh, she was hired by the Alton Tourism Bureau to, to run the tower for the village of Hartford. Amy, come ahead and talk to her. Like Charlie said, um, we're pretty much a nonprofit. We rely on helping hands to make sure that we're doing everything that we can do to make sure that our visitors are getting the best experience possible. Um, as Charlie mentioned, I've been there for about a year and a half, and uh, I pretty much do the marketing and promotions for the tower, play the special events, uh, make sure that all of that stuff is running smoothly. Uh, recruit and train our volunteers, schedule everybody. Uh, so. So to speak, I pretty much do it all. Um, in the little packet that you guys have, it's just some information for you to take home, because I know we don't have a lot of time here, and actually I'm going to quickly say what it is I want to, and then I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, inside your packet, you'll see some uh, benefits for volunteering. You will also see a volunteer application. Uh, I think a few of you have got some rack cards. There's also a special pass, so just for listening to us complain how we need help, uh, that, that way you guys can come down and, and see it for yourself. Um, by all means, we are asking either yourselves for help or anybody that you may know. Uh, there are a lot of uh, schools in our area, I know East Alton Wood River High School is uh, one of the newer ones, that require service hours for students. And we are here to fulfill those service hours if those kids need them. Uh, right now, I, I don't know if anybody's heard of, of Scott Miner. I think he's He's, uh, he's an 18-year-old uh, high school student, but he's running for city council. He's one of the youngest members, or youngest to, to try to do so. He is a volunteer at the tower, and uh, we try to support him in, in whatever way we possibly can. Um, just to give you some information about what our volunteers do. Our volunteers are pretty much the face of the tower. You're the ones that are greeting people as soon as they walk in. You're taking the tours up into the tower, so each of those three levels you're giving somewhat of a speech. You're telling all of our visitors about the history of the tower, uh, about history of Lewis and Clark, and then also kind of about the rivers that it is you're taking a look at. Also, our volunteers uh, kind of act as, as somewhat of a, a travel agent, if you will. Uh, we pretty much act as a visitor center for our region. Uh, we're the gateway to the byway. So we have this lovely map in the back that displays all of our uh, communities. Gives nice interpretive videos that talk about the history, um, little minute videos. And we have tons of brochures and, and we kind of uh, help people plan their next destination. So, like I said, we're helping for people, or we're looking for, for more help here. And um, I know a lot of the other attractions and sites require specific service hours. 
uh, there's a minimum or a max that you can work. We don't have a cap on that. Uh, what we do is we have calendars set up on our desk and you sign up for the shift that you want. We have volunteers that work once a season. We have volunteers that work twice a week. And uh, we figure we'll take it when we can get you. And what we do is we do on-site training. So we'll provide the polo, and as long as you've got your khakis, we'll take you in and uh, basically shadow a couple of our volunteers. Uh, that way you can hear some stories, and we give you a fact sheet too. So we don't by all means cut you loose with a group of people that you don't feel comfortable talking in front of. Uh, but we will give you the training that you need, and once you do feel comfortable, we'll give you that group, and you'll go up on your own tours. We have a few extra little things going on uh, this season as well. We just ended our Eagles over the Confluence season, so for uh, the past couple months, we've had an event every Saturday, uh, live Eagle, we've had photo workshops, we've ice wood carver, chainsaw carvers and stuff. Um, actually, in October, we just received the... Uh, Dr. Marlon Perkins Award from the World Bird Sanctuary. It was the Conservation Organization of the Year Award based off of those events. But what we're doing, we're extending, a, adding in a few more events for our calendars. Um, we've got, let's see, for Easter Sunday, all the Hartford churches are coming together, doing a sunrise service at the tower. Uh, we've done that ever since we've been open. And uh, they all come together. They welcome anybody and everybody. You don't have to be a member of the church. Uh, but if you want to join, have somewhere unique and fun to go for uh, your Easter service. Uh, by all means, they're, they're welcoming everybody. We also have our Tower Wind Festival that's coming up at the end. It's the last Saturday of March. I believe it's the 30th. And uh, basically, we're celebrating the wind, the river wind. So we'll have pinwheel making, kite making, uh, Gateway kite, kite Club out of St. Louis. They're coming, doing some step kite flying. Excuse me. And um, we'll do some other stuff, fun activities for kids. Everything is free. And, of course, we need extra hands for all of that kind of stuff as well. Um, I guess, uh, I, first of all, I want to say thank you for having us here. Uh, the last few meetings that I've attended were for a motorcycle uh, ride that we were planning. So the people I were speaking to all in uh, leather jackets and chains. And so seeing the ties is a little bit less intimidating for